Hello. Sorry, I'm back. I uh, pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Am I back? Yes, I'm back. Okay. Whoops. All right. So <laughs> we're going to get started here in a comfortable seated position. I'm back. I'm back. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, I was just mentioning that our our focus today is going to be, and this whole week is going to be on mindfulness. So, like when you're pressing the pause button on music and you actually stop the stream. So, coming to a comfortable seated position, you can sit with your legs crossed, and then it's just heart over hips, head over heart, or in the chair, a lot the same alignment. Um. If your lower back brings you any pain in this position, just lift your hips up a little bit so that they're elevated and higher than your knees. Hands come to rest on the knees, either palms down to ground down, or palms up to give and receive energy if you feel you've got a little extra to give today. Eyes can close if that's comfortable for you. If not, soft gaze to the floor ahead of you. Not looking at anything in particular, not staring, not glaring, just a soft gaze. And we'll start with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose, the shoulders rise up towards the ears, and an audible sigh out through the mouth as the shoulders drop away. Returning the breath just to a normal, natural pace, in and out through the nose if that's available. We'll take a moment here to arrive. Let go of everything that came before and everything that's to come up after. And just become present to yourself here in this space. Begin to allow sounds into your awareness. Perhaps traffic passing outside. Or morning birds singing. Allowing all sounds in all part of this moment, this experience. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. And the weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. The weight of your hands on your knees. And begin to scan your body from head down towards toes, like passing through an x-ray machine. Scanning for any parts that are tight or sensitive, restless or fidgety. And taking note to work into those spaces that call out for your attention today throughout our practice. And sending the awareness up to our energetic body, pranamaya kosha. Notice where you are in this exact moment on a scale of 1 to 10 energetically. One being exhausted, fatigued, ready for bed. 10 being so full of energy, it's hard to sit still.
And shifting the awareness up to the breath. No need to change it, just observe inhalations, exhalations, whatever holding in between. And shift the awareness up to the mind, allowing thoughts and feelings to arise, reserving them from a distance without engaging, without feeding them, like clouds passing in the sky. Just notice what are the quality of the thoughts today? Do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they holding on to the past or attempting to predict the future? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. We'll shift the awareness back down to the breath. This time actively expanding the inhalation. Belly inflates like a balloon on the inhale. And exhales, release belly button in towards spine, pulling the belly in, deflating. Inhale, fills belly, chest, uh, rather, and ribs, exhaling ribs, then belly. Inhale, fills belly, ribs expand out to the sides, exhale ribs, then belly, squeezing it all in complete exhalation. Inhale, fills belly, ribs and chest, air fills all the way up to the collarbones. Exhale, releases chest, ribs, belly. Continue like this with your own breath space, Dirga Pranayam, three part breath, filling from bottom to top. Exhaling top to bottom. Keeping your breath as slow and deep as possible. The space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw relaxes, tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth. Stay nice and tall if there's a string pulling you from the crown of your head towards the sky. Just continue your deep breathing practice. Today's principle of mindfulness that we'll be focusing on is called beginner's mind. Choosing, and choosing to approach an experience with a beginner's mind is allowing yourself to clear away your preconceived ideas, whatever shoulds and what ifs, and instead cultivate an attitude of openness, curiosity, and eagerness to learn. Beginner's mind calls you to leave behind your assumptions and fears 
making space for a new approach. Whether these are the first handful of yoga classes you've ever attended, or you're well over a decade in, the invitation is just to approach class with a beginner's mind, practicing beginner's mindset here. You can release any effort on the breath, returning to your own natural pace, perhaps affected by that pranayam breathing practice. I'm going to bring your hands to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra, thumbs pressed against the sternum in no space between the fingers. Consider here setting an intention or a dedication for class. You can continue with your dedication that you've been working on for the past week or choose to have a beginner's mindset for today's practice. And we'll seal that, that intention with the sound of OM. First, a cleansing breath. hands to release to your lap, chin drops towards chest, and inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder, exhaling chin to chest, left ear rolls to left shoulder. Allowing the head to roll side to side, just beginning to open the space between Ear, neck. And bring the head back through center, up to neutral, begin to roll the shoulders forward. Your eyes can still be closed for this part. There's really no wrong way of doing this. We're just opening the space between the shoulder blades. And change directions, opening the space in the chest. Nice and coming to stillness in the shoulders. We'll just bring the chest forward to the right back, rounding like the letter C, and to the left. Forward, right, back, to the left. It's almost like you're trying to hit all four corners of a square. And then we'll start to smooth that out, more like your chest is hitting the round edges of an analog clock or the inside of a barrel. Once again, there's no wrong or right way of doing this. It's just a little free movement in the beginning of class. So you just wake up the body, spine, how you feel in your hips. We're gonna change directions here. Rolling to the left, back right, forward. You 
can use your hands a little bit to push or to hold, but there's no, it's not like your deepest, it doesn't even have a name, fold or round or anything. It's a little free movement, like I said, so no gripping. Just let this circle spiral smaller and smaller until you find yourself back at center. We'll continue the work that we've been doing on the cervical spine, on the neck. I'm just turning to the side so you can see me, but you can still face the screen. That's better for you. So I'm seated up nice and tall, even if you're in a chair. This is gonna work. Staying up nice and tall from the shoulders, bless you. From the shoulders down, don't move. Just the neck's gonna move. So the chin tucks down towards chest and then pulls down as far as it can go. If you can't go any further, start to go up. Like I'm making a circle with my nose all the way up and back. And then chin tucks in towards chest when I can't go any further. So I'm circling down, forward, up, back, down. And so we're smoothing that out to create one flowing movement. The temptation here is to move the shoulders around to try to make that happen and just let that go, just let the shoulders be soft. We're opening up new places in our spine here, in the neck. A bunch of little bones there. And in between each of those vertebra is a joint. So we're going to change directions here. So looking up, we come forward. This time leading with the chin. Scoop down. And then come all the way back up. Chin tucked in. Up and open. Forward. Down. And back in. Without that movement as well. And if you're having trouble smoothing it out or remembering which direction to go in, just remember beginner's mindset. This is probably not something you were taught in school. There's no reason for you to know how to do this. Sometimes it's the things that look so simple that can be the most frustrating as we're learning them because we feel like we should already know how to do it and I'm telling you, you don't. It's all good. All right, let's bring it back to center. Do a little shake of the head, looking left, looking right. Drop the ear left, drop the ear right. Okay. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, bend over the right. Left arm reaches over for a side bend. Inhale, up through center. And exhale, out to the left. Following the breath in to rise. And out to bend. In to rise, out to bend. Once more to each side, following your own breath space. So if during class you breathe slower than I do, move slower than I do. If you breathe faster, you have two options. You can either just move a little bit quicker to match your breath's pace just work towards elongating the breath or you can take two breaths for each movement. Okay. Bring me back in center, deep breath in 
and exhale, twist to the right. Left hand lands on top of right knee, right hand lands on the ground close to your lower back and chest opens toward the side right wall. Inhale, rise up through center. And exhale, twist over to the left, opening the chest to the opposite wall. Following the breath in to rise, out to twist. In to rise, out to twist. Once more to each side. back in the middle, bend the elbows, hands come to shoulder height, wave out the hands, just warming up the wrists. Play piano. Just moving my wrists all the way left and right to the full range of motion. Then toss pizzas, my hands are pressing back as far as they can, fingers spread wide, and then rotating side to side, or like clockwise, counterclockwise. And we'll shake off water. Beautiful. Legs out in front, spread and scrunch the toes. Roll out the ankles, change directions, and bend in the knees, feet come mats distance apart, and we'll drop the knees side to side. Just opening up the hips. Make sure the feet are far enough apart that when they land, both knees have space to land on the ground instead of landing on top of your other leg. And we'll just let the knees drop over to the right. Bring the right hand in close to the right hip on the ground. And then we're just gonna sweep open and up, lifting onto the knees, rising up that left arm. Breath in, exhale, sweep down, over to the left, left arm rises. Exhale through center, inhale to sweep and rise. Exhale through center, inhale, sweep and rise. We got one more to each side. Beautiful. Meaning back and center. Let's drop the knees over to the right and come into a tabletop pose. Facing the front of your mat. And there we go. So for tabletop, hands are below the shoulders and knees are below the hips. And we'll just roll through three rounds of cat and cow pose. Inhaling belly drop, tips and chest rise. And exhaling round in the spine, chin tucks. And uh, uh -huh, middle back rounds. Following the breath in for cow pose, belly drops, hips and chest rise. Exhale, rounding in the spine, chin tucks towards chest. Once more, your own breath space. And we'll release it through neutral. 
Right leg reaches up and back behind you. Roll out the ankle a bit. And then pressing the heel straight back. Left arm sweeps forward for extended tabletop pose, like you're gonna shake someone's hand. So we're nice and long in the spine. No dip, we're not in cat or cow with the spine. We're in complete neutral tabletop. Full breath in here. And out. Notice if you're sinking into the right shoulder and instead press the ground away. And left hand touches down, right knee touches down. Left leg sweeps up and back behind you. Roll out the ankle. I'm pressing the heel away. Right arm sweeps forward. I'm going to make one long line of energy from my right fingertips through my left heel. Pressing strong through my left shoulder so as not to sink into that joint. slowly releasing down. It's okay if we're just building up that that balance there. So it's okay if you're a little wobbly in that pose. Okay. Right foot takes a step forward between the hands. Left foot steps up to meet it. Inhale, hands come up to a uh, halfway lift. And so bring your feet out nice and wide. So feet are almost at the edges of the mat or they're a little bit more than shoulders distance. And then allow the knees to bend deep. So your hands can release down. We're just gonna give the head a nod, yes. Give the head a shake, no. Oops. You can grab opposite elbows with your hands and give your body a sway side to side, bending and straightening one leg and then the other for ragdoll. So really this is just another free movement kind of thing. Whatever is gonna feel good for you as we wake up the backs of the legs. Nice and gentle. Gently coming back through center, releasing the hands down, heel toe the feet in towards one another so the knees are really meant to make that happen. And the knees can stay bent, heavy head, we slowly roll up one vertebra at a time, all the way to stand. Arms sweep up when you get there. And exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Head tilts back to follow the fingertips. And exhale, forward fold. You can gently bend in the knees to release any lower pain or any potential for harm in the lower back. Inhale, halfway lift, hands on shins. So it's like you're making the number seven with your body. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, bend in the knees, send the hips back, arms and chest come up forward. So I'm sending the hips back, back, so far back, I can see my toes past my knees. This is called Utkatasana, chair pose. It's like you're sitting in a chair, and then I'm leaning my shoulders back as far as I can go before I fall back. And the arms come forward and up overhead, so my biceps are by my ears, deep breath in. Exhaling, belly comes down, and it's almost like you're um, gonna dig into the ground, like digging sand and then throw it behind you as the arms come up and back behind you. Inhale, back up to normal chair pose, arms come up, chest comes up. Exhale, sweeping down, but it's all happening in slow motion. Arms sweep back and up. Once more, inhale, 
rise, chair pose. Exhale, sweep it down and back. So building that strength in the thighs. And this inhale brings you all the way up to stand. Head tilts back to follow the fingertips. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down to the ground. Right foot takes a giant step back. Gently release the right knee to the ground. Toes can stay tucked or untuck. And we'll come up to our low lunge. Left knee over left ankle. And then notice here how far apart your knees are from one another will depend, will dictate how deep the stretch is. So the closer your back knee is, to your front knee, it's more like a marriage proposal kind of pose, then the less of a stretch you're getting on your hip. So you can bring your hands down, scooch your right knee a little bit further back until you feel a stretch on the thigh. You might be going further, you might be the kind of person, this probably shows up in other places in your life, that you go all the way to the very edge, but then it'll be hard to sustain it. You don't want to be an actual pain in the joint. So wherever your edges, bring it in just another uh, degree or another like inch or two, right? We can do that by elongating the lower back. So it's a little tuck. So it's from Donald Duck butt. You just give a little tuck in and then just feel the difference there. Leaning in to that hip versus tucking the hip in. So I'm bringing my belly in, letting myself sink into the joint engaging, and that's gonna stretch this even more without having to go into a full split or something, right? Still, the left knee stays over the left ankle. And if that's not true, you just adjust to make it so. Arms come up overhead on the inhale. And exhale, shoulders melt away from the ears. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Another deep breath in here, and high twist left. Left arm sweeps back behind you, right arm sweeps forward. This is the opposite of what feels natural. It's gonna feel natural to start open to the right. We're purposefully going left, which is left com less comfortable. Inhale, back up through center. Exhale, left. Same side twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, hands come down to the ground. Right toes tuck under. Left leg gets sent back for our, our uh, plank pulse. So it's like a push-up position. Shoulders below, our shoulders above the wrists, heels back. We're not dipping in, so if you feel yourself in like this like cow pose kind of thing going on, tuck the hips just like we played with before. Squeeze the glutes. Activation of the lower abs. If this is really, really difficult, just drop, drop the knees. But still notice that the knees drop, there's a tendency to do this, and we just want to keep the length in the lower back. Full breath in here. And then it's a slow motion lower down with the elbows tight in towards the ribs or squeezing my ribcage and I don't lower past 90 degrees. Then chin, knees, chest come down. I'm pressing it forward for baby cobra pose. Tops of the feet pressed into the ground, big toes touching, glutes are squeezed tight, hips pressing into the earth. My shoulders, chest, and head rise using just my core strength. In fact, let's do locust today instead. So the arms come down by the sides, palms face down, pinkies touching my thighs. Inhaling, chest and shoulders rise, head rises, maybe the arms rise. Exhale, releasing, mouth, chin or forehead down to the ground. I'm just turning my head so I can speak to you guys. We're going to do a couple more rounds of that. So squeezing the glutes, pressing the shoelace part of the feet down so hard that the knees lift off the ground. That's how strong the engagement is. Chest and shoulders rise, 
head rises, arms rise, locust, navasana, or shalambasana, there we go. So here we are, shoulder blades are squeezed, we're breathing fully even in the contortion of the pose. Might feel okay, check in with your lower back instead of my words, to lift the legs. And then the legs are going to want to spread out, keep them together the best of your ability, big toes are still touching, my fingertips are reaching back, look like I've touched the toes. It's more like my chest is trying to reach the front wall and my legs are trying to reach the back wall than anything trying to touch the ceiling. It's all about length. Last deep breath here. Gently release legs, hands, head down to the ground. Hands come underneath the shoulders. Uh, let's see, big toes touch, bend in the knees, send the hips up and back for our child's pose. So the knees are nice and wide, sending my hips back to touch my heels. Head releases down to the ground, no taps and my hands are pressing into the earth. So hard that the elbows stay lifted. You can give your head a nice little rock side to side to give your forehead a little massage. And give your ribs a little movement side to side to release any tension in the lower back. And then walk on high fingertips all the way over to the right. Left glute is still glued to the left heel. So I'm just side bending to the right. keeping that same closeness to the ground. If you still feel you got space, left hand can come on top of the right hand to give the shoulder a stretch. And then fingertip toe all the way over to the left. Making sure the right hip is still touching, or the right glute still touching the right heel or close to it. And if you still got space, one side might be different than the other. It's okay. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to look the same to actually balance out, if that makes sense. Right hand can land on top of the left hand. Bring it back through center. Hands press into the ground, back to tabletop pose. Knees under, hips, toes tuck under, hips press up high, downward facing dog. Here bend one knee and then the other, pedaling out the heels, walking out your dog. And let the hips kind of sway side to side. Just finding your spacing here. about your spacing here in downward facing dog one way to find it is by rolling forward into your plank and then if your butt is still too high then you know your feet need to be further back so here we are in plank pose and then set hiking the hips up and back behind you this is a good place to start if this is too much on your shoulders to come down you find yourself like almost in, like you're in a push-up position see my shoulders are forward you want to create a nice long line from the palms of the hands up to the hips. Then you can bring your feet in a little bit to alleviate that pressure in the shoulders. That's gonna bring more pressure into the legs, like more of a stretch into the backs of the legs. So if you're feeling like your legs are having a hard time stretching out here, then you can walk them further away. So the further your feet are from your hands, the deeper the stretch in the shoulders. The closer your feet are to your hands, the deeper the stretch in the backs of the legs. All right, we got one deep breath here. <sighs> the 
Then looking up between the hands, bend in the knees, step, hop, or tiptoe all the way up so that your feet meet your hands. Inhale to a halfway lift, big toes come to touch, a little space between the heels. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, it brings you all the way up to stand, arms sweep up when you get there. And exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead, chest slightly tilts back for a little baby back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Chair pose on the inhale. Bend in the knees, sink the hips, arms sweep forward. So my hips are back, back, super far back. I'm squeezing my knees together. Glutes are squeezed tight as well. So there's like a elongate, elongating of the lower back here. Pressing in through the, uh, activating through the core. My knees are squeezing together. That helps alleviate some of the pressure from the thighs. Deep breath in. And high twist open to the right on the exhale. Or rather, let's inhale open to the right, like you're gathering clouds. Exhale, squeezing that air out through center. Inhale, gather open to the left. And exhale, right. Once more, right. And center. Left. And center. Inhale all the way up to stand. Full body stretch. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down to the ground, left foot takes a giant step back. Bending in the right knee, we lower the left knee to the ground, perhaps untucking the toes up to you. And bring it up to our low lunge on Janayasana, chest or rather shoulders over hips. So here we're finding that spacing that works for you. And you can check this out for yourself as well. Once you feel a bit stable, left knee, or sorry, right knee over right ankle, hands come onto your lower back slash butt, kind of like if you had high-waisted jeans, they'd be in the pockets. And then there's a tuck forward. And then it's like Daffy Duck, Donald Duck, butt out. So we're just kind of like, just by tilting the hips, our range of motion completely changes. So just notice that the more tucked in and engaged, the less forward I can press because my left thigh and hip only have so much range. But as we tilt back, all of this opens up. So finding that space in between that works for you. Peace. Thank you. And then arms come up overhead. And exhale, shoulders melt away from the ears. Another deep breath in. And high twist open to the right. My right arm's reaching back, left arm's reaching forward. My chest is facing the knee that's forward. Inhale through center. Same side, twist right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. So we're moving nice and slow, like through honey, to avoid momentum. Inhale, through center. And exhale, hands release down to the ground, framing the right foot. Left toes tuck under, right leg gets sent back. Plank pose. Full breath in here, rolling onto the tiptoes, shoulders go just past the wrists. And exhale, bending in the elbows, they straight past the ribs so we lower down halfway full breath in here at chaturanga and exhale chin chest knees comes down inhaling to elongate out tops of the feet press into the ground mouth chin or forehead on the ground reaching the hands back just as before setting up for a next round of shalabhasana locust pose 
option here to interlace the hands with the lower back. So it's like I'm holding my own hand on the lower back. Squeezing the glutes, hips press into the ground, tops of the feet press into the ground, arms pull up and back, chest and shoulders rise. Maybe the arms rise, but still it's like my knuckles are trying to touch my toes instead of the ceiling. Then maybe the legs rise. Zip up the legs so the toes are touching or close to it. So everything's being pulled in, uh, in towards center line and apart as in towards front of the room and back of the room. So we're strengthening the whole backside by these are your good posture muscles. This is undoing all of the rounding and hunching, slouching. So if it's feeling really difficult, really challenging, just keep breathing no matter what. Staying in a breath longer than you think you can. And allow yourself to be surprised. Just be curious. How long can I stay in this? How deep can I breathe? And we'll gently release down without flopping down. Feet touch down. Unlace the fingertips. <sighs> and allow the shoulders to release down to the ground. Bend in the knees and windshield wiper the feet side to side. Nice. Just let the hips go with it to release any tension in the lower back. Then hands tuck underneath the shoulders. We're pressing it up for our tabletop pose. Then the left arm sweeps open. Exhale, weave the arm through for thread the knee. Lucy, can you sit here? Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Left arm sweeps open and exhaling, we weave the arm through for thread the needle pose. Landing side ear and shoulder onto the ground. Back of the hands pressing into the earth. Right hand is pressing into the ground, keeping the chest open towards the side wall. That hand might feel good to bring it up overhead or even onto the lower back, the back of the hand can come onto the lower back or even reach around for inner left thigh. But if to grab that inner left thigh, your shoulder comes forward, it completely defeats the purpose. So let's just keep it nice and open. We're just choosing the option that gives our shoulders the most openness. The bottom arm is like a kickstand, hard, or soft, hardening or softening, to change where they feel the stretch on the upper back, the shoulder blade. Maybe the right leg extends straight. I still have my toes on the ground so that I can really uh, adjust for my balance. You might play with pointing the toe and slowly levitating the leg up. So that takes the same muscles as it did in our locust pose to raise up the legs from the ground. Same muscles that we use for our three-legged dog. But plus balance. Still we're breathing fully here. If you raise it too fast or too high, you'll end up rolling onto your back. Maybe some, maybe some of you already just found that out. It's okay, just begin again. Right? We're beginning again, beginner's mindset. Just laugh it off. Nobody saw it except you. And even if we did, probably mostly everyone would be concerned, but there's nothing really to be concerned about. It's all good. It's just playing. Another deep breath in here. And exhale, toes touch back down. Knee touches back down. Right hand lands in front of the face. Left arm sweeps open. Exhale, hand down to the ground, tabletop pose. I'm just going to turn so I can face you. Right arm sweeps open towards the sky. Exhale, weave the arm through. Thread the needle pose. Landing the right arm and shoulder onto the ground, the right ear or right side of the head. I'm pressing the ground away with my left hand, opening my chest towards 
that side wall, the long side edge of my mat wall. Maybe this left hand moves to overhead or comes into the half bind by bringing the hand onto the lower back or the inner right thigh, still mat. Any of these movements is just to pull, pull that left shoulder even further back. That's the purpose. I have a preference for being here, even though I can reach the other one. This just feels like a nicer stretch on my upper back and shoulders. You might extend the left leg long. And then point the toes just about an inch or two off the ground. And there's a slow motion levitation. That leg up towards the sky or up towards the wall behind you. All the while the bottom arm like a kickstand is pressing harder or softer into the ground to maintain balance to maintain that stretch in the right shoulder blade. Actively reaching through the toe instead of bringing all the weight into my neck, I'm lifting like someone's pulling my leg up and away. Just fully breathing here. If you fall out of it, it's all good. Laugh it off. Sometimes even when you don't feel like laughing at something, like, just try it out. Just see how it works. Just smile. How many times have you laughed just to uh, kind of like fit in at a comedy show or during a funny, like a comedy movie at the movie theater and later you're like, that wasn't funny, why did I laugh? Like if you can do that for other people, for social norms, you can do that for yourself. Just see what happens. We got one more breath here. And slowly touch the foot down. Knee touches down, left hand comes in front of the face, right arm sweeps open, and the right hand touches down. Just turning for a consistency of direction. Toes tuck under, hips press up high, downward facing dog. Probably feels a lot different than the last one. You just notice how it feels. All that twisting in the spine. So really focusing on twisting today. Finding some stillness in this posture. Fingers spread wide. Head is heavy. Eyes are open, looking between the ankles or between the knees. This is an inversion. In other words, our heart is higher than our head. So we just want to keep the eyes open so you don't get any head rush, any lightheadedness. Deep breath in through the nose. Heels rise up. Onto tiptoes, exhale through the mouth, side out, <sighs> heels drop down. Two more like that. <sighs> <sighs> and looking up between the hands, bend in the knees, uh, step or hop forward, feet meet the hands. So if you are in a beginner's mindset today and you want to play with hopping, basically how you do it is you bend your knees like a spring being loaded. Look up between the hands and it's like you're trying to kick your butt with your heels and then land up there. So you can play with those little jumps. I'm going to bring my shoulders over my wrists so that when my legs hinge. So when my shoulders hinge, my feet are already going to, no matter what, kind of land by my hands. All right. So inhale into a halfway lift. Big toes come to touch at the top of the mat. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale brings you all the way up to stand. Arms sweep up when you get there. And exhale, hands to heart center. Nice. All right. So, facing the front of the mat, or no, let's face one another for this, apologies. Your hands onto your hips, and then sweeping the arms forward, sending the hips back for our table, or rather our chair pose. We've got chairs, we've got tables. 
hands come onto the hips, my knees are still bent like chair. I'm gonna take my right knee and just open it out to the side. And maybe I'm gonna cross this foot forward, grab and hold. Grab and hold of my foot, and then crossing the heel onto the left thigh. Feeling that, that heel hold. As I straighten this standing leg, the hips press forward. Just like in our tree pose that we've been playing with, the hips are pressing forward and the right knee is pressing down and back. So just like when we're in this position, hips are pressing forward, knee is pressing out and back. Same deal with this. So I bend the knee just so that I have like a little shelf to kind of land this heel on. But then the hips press forward, knee opens back and out. So there's this leveraging of this left hip pressing forward, this right knee pressing back, and it creates this sticking point with the foot and the thigh. We're coming into whatever version of tree pose that we have been playing with that serves you today. Maybe keeping one hand on there is more stable for you. One hand to heart center. And you wanna play with floating both hands to heart center, workshops in a tree pose. So there's endless versions of tree pose, right? Heels pressing into the ground, crown of the head reaching up towards the sky, pressing the hips forward. And then releasing, gentle bend in the right knee, sending the hips a little bit farther back so that this foot can come all the way down. All right, deep breath in, sigh it out, <sighs> let that go. This is a really, really deep opening in the hip. If your leg does not do that shape, here is beautiful. Quad, I mean, calf is beautiful. Inner hip, also great. If you've been playing with this inner thigh one the whole time, like all month, this is our 14th, 14th class together, 15th class together, then check out, just, just try. Beginner's mind, it's all good. If it's your first time trying something, you're gonna, like, you're gonna fall, probably, right? So, knees bend, hips get set back, chair pose. Left knee opens out to the side, light on the toes. And then crossing this foot in front, grabbing a hold, and pulling it in, pointing the toe. I'm trying to get my foot almost to line up with that like bikini line, like edge where my thigh meets my torso. And then as I start to stand up straight, the foot's gonna wanna fall, but instead the hips press forward, knee presses back to counterbalance one another. Hips pressing forward, using the muscle of the right quad to hook onto the edge of the foot. It's okay if your hands stay on there the whole time to keep it up, to keep the shoulders relaxed. Remember, pressing forward in the hips, pressing back in the left knee. Just breathing fully here, relax, any tension in the jaw, no clenching the jaw. Your hands are in fists, let that go too. So when we're being challenged, when we're trying something new, maybe we're frustrated, we have these tendencies. Everybody has their own kind of physical tendencies that they go back to. Loose, like licking your butt if you're a dog. Um, like hands coming into fists, jaw clenching, shoulders rising up to the ears. Everyone has their own thing, grinding your teeth, and it's gonna show up in class. And it's not that, it's like, oh, I'm doing the thing. And it's like, no, oh, okay, this is the moment when I do the thing. So what can I do? <sighs> Invite space between the jaw, between the teeth. Drop the shoulders away, maybe a couple shoulder rolls. Open and close the hands, shake off water, right? Like whatever your thing is, that your go-to physical response is to frustration, 
side out. Learn a counter balance, a counter pose here in class. We just got one more breath here. And then just bend it, just hinge at the hips a little bit. And that tension is broken, the foot falls right down. So just nice and purposeful falling, more of a floating down. All right, let's shake that out, shake that out, shake out the arms. We're just gonna start our lymphatic shake practice here. So lymphatic shaking does what it sounds, shakes up the lymphatic system, helps drain out any stuck, anything that's stuck in the body. So we're just giving our bodies a shake. You can give it a full jump, like those little personal uh, trampolines, perfect for lymphatic shaking. If you can't, won't, don't want to, or your neighbors downstairs already hate you, you can just lift up onto the heels and then drop down with enough force that it creates like a ripple jiggle in your body. Okay, I'm bouncing. I think I mentioned this before, but I have some great lymphatic shaking songs if you can't make it to class every day, or you just want to bring this practice into a daily thing. I have a great playlist. And just put on like a four or five minute long song. We don't do that. We don't shake for that long in class. And for, if it was a longer class, we would. But I uh, highly recommend. So shake out the hands. This really, there's no wrong way of doing it. You just want to keep the whole body moving to the best of your ability. Don't hold back. The next thing we're rolling through is our breath of joy. So that's a four part breath. Three inhales, one big exhale. So there's no exhale in between the inhalations. It's 30%, 33% of the air in, 33% of the air in. 33% of the air in, and then one big ha to let it out. And the movement goes like this. In, 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 out, ha. In, arms sweep forward, in, arms sweep out, like the letter T. In, arms sweep forward, and out, ha. Just like we did in our chair pose earlier. All right, 10 rounds, let's go. In, 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 ha! In, 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 ha! 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 Halfway. Allow your eyes to close, hands to come onto the heart and the belly. If your body's still swaying, just go with it. Just take a moment here to arrive in the space in your body. Just take a moment here to notice what was created, what came up for you, what showed up for you. This dust storm, dust storm pass through what is left standing. And gently blink your eyes open. We'll turn to the back of the mat. Inhale, arms reach up overhead, full body stretch. Exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale, half lift. And exhale, bend in the knees deep, 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 so deep that you come into a small little ball. So pull it all in. So imagine, what's it called? A supernova. It's the opposite, uh, like a black hole. Everything is being pulled in towards center, tight, tight, tight. Chin tucks towards chest. Bring in that tension to the jaw. Scrunch the shoulders up towards the ears. Round. Bring fists to the hands, curl in the toes, everything tight, 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 tight. Exhale all the air out. And then release with a deep breath. Hands come back behind you. Allow your legs to come down, your hips to come down rather. Legs come out long. Scooch the hips forward a bit. Just gonna do a quick forward fold. So hips are back a bit. Backs of the legs are towards the ground or working their way towards that. Might be a little space beneath the knees and that's okay. Deep breath in to get tall. Dandasana is so staff pose making the letter L. And exhale, belly, chest, head comes forward for forward fold. The hands land where they do, on ankles, on calves, around the feet. And the feeling here is just nose towards toes, just here for a breath. It's a forward fold stretch, pulling the spine nice and long. And then a full body stretch out, lowering with control. Lie all the way back. Full body stretch. And allow the arms to release down by the sides. Knees come in towards the chest. Drop the knees over to the right. Right hand lands on top of left knee. Left arm opens up like the letter T. Palm face open to the sky. Supta Matsudrasana, supine spinal twist. Let the whole body be relaxed, just the left shoulders pressing down towards the ground. Head comes up through center, knees come up through center. Roll the hips over, or the knees over to the left. Left hand lands on top of right knee, right arm opens up like the letter T. Right shoulders pressing down towards the ground. Maybe the head turns to face the opposite hand to complete the spinal twist. And then head comes up through center, knees come up through center, hugging the knees in. Notice, is there any last movement, wiggle, twist that would round out your practice that your body's calling for? Doesn't have to have a specific yoga name, whatever it might be. Just letting your body roll through that movement. It might include grabbing a blanket or socks to cover your body as the body temperature does lower in our next pose. We're setting up for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. A posture that allows us to integrate all of the effort from class today, all of that work. working your way into your Shavasana final relaxation pose. I'm seated up just so I can speak to you and play some singing bowls for you. But you can stay laying down on your back, flat on your back. And that, legs come down the length of the mat, feet land at least a foot apart, legs so relaxed that the feet naturally sway open to the sides. If this position hurts your lower back, just roll a towel and place it beneath your knees or a blanket um, or a pillow beneath the knees to keep a little bend in the knees, releasing any tension in the lower back that may happen. Arms land by the sides of the body 
at least six inches from the body, palms face up, a symbol, a mudra of receptivity, allowing yourself to receive the full benefits of your effort here today. Give a little swallow to release any tension from the throat. And invite space between top and bottom teeth. We'll start Shavasana how we started our grounding meditation with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Audible sigh out through the mouth. Eyes can close if that's comfortable. If not, a soft gaze at the ceiling is fine. No staring or glaring, just observing, rather just resting. And invite that space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw hangs heavy. Tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth. And all the muscles surrounding the mouth and jaw relax. Muscles surrounding the nose release, allowing your exhalations to become longer and deeper than your inhalations. Eyes rest heavy in their sockets. And the eyelids just barely touch. And the space between the eyebrows broadens. So all the muscles in the forehead relax. The muscles surrounding the ears and the back of the head all release. Neck and throat relax. Every single vertebra in the neck integrating and software updating the mobility and resiliency we practiced today. Shoulders melt away. Upper arms and elbows relax. Forearms and wrists rest. And backs of the hands, palms, knuckles, fingers, fingertips, fingernail beds, whole hand alive with vibration, whole hand alive with creative potential. Rest and integrates your effort. Upper back, middle and lower back, rest, supported by this earth below you. Chest naturally rises and falls. The rib cage protecting lungs that oxygenate the 
body. And between two lungs, the heart. Sending lifeblood without our direct orders, automatically fluctuating in pace and intensity on intuition. Belly naturally rises and falls with the breath. Hips, pelvis, glutes rest heavy. Thighs and knees relax. Lower legs and ankles relax. And heels, arches, toe ball mounds, tops of the feet, and all of your toes relax. Whole foot relaxes. Whole body rests. Whole body rests. Whole body rests. Allow for everything that did and did not happen in class today. And know that in yoga, practice always makes practice. Nothing more, nothing less. Gently invite your inhalations to become longer and deeper than your exhalations. That feeling of heaviness replaced with a feeling of openness and expansion. Invite fingers and toes to wiggle. And allow your head to rock side to side. Arms reach up overhead for a full body stretch. And allow your knees to bend and roll over to whichever side feels natural landing in a fetal position. Fully released and fully supported by the earth below you. Allow yourself to rest here and be held by the earth. And today we focused on how practicing having a beginner's mind, the first principle of mindfulness, according to John Kabat-Zinn, who popularized the concept of mindfulness for us Western-minded folk. Beginner's mind, choosing to approach and experience 
in a beginner's mind is allowing yourself to clear away your preconceived ideas, your shoulds and what ifs, and instead cultivating an attitude of openness, curiosity, and eagerness to learn. Beginner's mind calls you to leave behind your assumptions and fears, making space for a new approach. If that concept serves you, take it with you off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. Gently with as little effort as possible, press your hands into the ground. Eyes can even stay closed to come up to a seated position facing the front, just like how we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra. The first namaste is said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class. And the second namaste is said out loud to one another. Namaste. <sighs> thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you found something that serves you. Feels like I exhaled out the week. Thank you. Oh, I'm so, so glad to hear that. <sighs> yeah, we did lots of, lots of uh, purposeful, intentional exhaling. You know, a well-placed audible sigh, guys, I'm telling you, especially now that most of us aren't around other people. <sighs> It's like, we all got in trouble for doing that as little kids. But I um, highly recommend as an adult. Maybe not in someone's face, but it's just you, yourself, or other people in the room who get it. You know, bring them to class and be like, you'll know why I'm audibly sighing. <laughs> Dramatically sighing, like as dramatic as possible. You know. You're welcome, Glassy. Oh, hi, Mom. Thank you. I'm glad you made it to class today. Oh, and Kai's here, too. What a great group. Sunday group, Sunday group. All right. Well, you guys know um, that I'm here all week, every day, same time, same place. Rumi came in during audible sigh, but that didn't stop me. Thank you. Yes, pentacle feelings. <laughs> Love it. Oh my gosh, was it during Breath of Joy? I've had people come in and be like, are you okay? And I'm like, join me. <laughs> like, I'm about to be more okay. That's the, that's the thing. I'm about to be more okay after this practice. Um, the woman who taught me that, that, <sighs> that, that Breath of Joy, her name is... Um, Jurian, Jurian Hughes, she's this like rock star yoga teacher out at Kripalu and she's like, um, like kind of short, I think like maybe like my height, smaller framed woman, um, and she's like super chipper and sweet and like, you know, she's like, she will like start crying in class and like singing randomly because she's like an amazing singing voice, she wants to be in theater and Broadway and all of this. And um, she teaches all these like uh, intuitive dance class. They're called like noon dance. It's this thing. It's like intuitive movement, and um, it's in, it's like literally what they make fun of in the movies. But if you actually go, it's like actually really amazing. I've taken my mom there. Yeah, mom, do you remember I took you to a noon dance? It's out there. It's like probably not someone's intro to a yoga yoga class, but. Um, but if you guys are lymphatic shaking with me and doing breath of joy, then like, girl, you guys love noon dance. Anyway, so Jurian teaches these. So just to give you an idea of like the kind of person she is. And then when she teaches, she taught us breath of joy. I knew to do that every day. Yeah, you're welcome. We do it every day, every day, uh, same time, same place. Um, freaking, yeah, so Jurian starts teaching us breath of joy. And she's just like, gets to the, ah, and it's just like the most intimidating like roar just like reverber the room's gigantic it's like an auditorium just like reverberates and she's like okay 
like after we're like what is happening and I'm so glad so grateful for her she's one of my great yoga teachers I spent a month with her a month with her out in the mountains so she's a huge influence of mine I felt like crap the last two days and I feel so much better now you the best oh I'm so sorry that you haven't been feeling well but I'm really glad that you were able to make it this morning and that you're feeling better now yeah, you know, and the thing is that we can't expect ourselves to feel good every day. You know, that's not true. Like, if you don't feel good every day, it doesn't mean that you're, like, broken or there's something wrong with you. Like, we're not supposed to feel the same every day, especially if you're a woman. Um, yes, I remember and cannot forget we had a great experience, especially sharing it with you. Oh, I love you, Mom. Yeah, it's hard to forget Noon Dance for sure. Um, Kripal is also just a magical place, you know. Yeah, so there's no pressure to feel good every single day. You know, everyone's welcome here also to, you know, just come hang out and just listen to class. Um, there are all of these studies. So once you've practiced, you know, you know what the movements feel like in your body. And I've been bringing in a lot of new things, especially if these have been your first few yoga classes or like even if this is like your first hundred yoga classes there's going to be new stuff that I'm bringing in that's not even a yoga pose. Like a lot of the stuff we do here isn't yoga poses. I've gotten it from primal movements, from dance class, from um, spiritual practices and kind of like brought it in. Like even this mindfulness stuff is from a, Buddha, is from a Buddhist practice. Um, so there's always going to be new things, beginner's mind, right? Um, but even just listening to the class, if, you're, if you can't get out of bed or you don't want to get out of bed, you're like, I need rest feel free to turn this on and just have it in the background um, and go through the movements in your head. And there's still a positive stress reduction reaction once your body knows what it would feel like going through it. Your head can, your brain can actually get you there to that, to that point. Yeah, I couldn't get out of bed and needed the extra sleep, I guess, but I feel a lot better forcing myself up today. I've been awful and water, I think that plays a part. Awful with water. Oh, I see, I see what you mean. Yes, okay, uh, yeah. If, it, if you're choosing between needed sleep, you know that you need sleep, you're not oversleeping, you like went to bed late, and class, don't feel any like pressure that you have to be here. Um, it was just an invitation. I don't want you to feel like you have to be, you know, in every three-legged dog if you have this video running. Water, water, water. Drink lots of... Today we focused a lot on twists. I forgot to say that before. Like I usually say, like, today we worked on... Uh, and I should have said today we worked on twists. So every time we do... We twist and all of that, it's like twice as much water as you're used to. So you just want to drain it all out. And with our lymphatic shaking and whatnot, you really want to be, you really want to be shaking, up uh, shaking. You really want to be drinking as much water as possible. Thank you, thank you. Okay, that just reminded me. This little watch. So when I'm not teaching, it gives me like little notifications. So thank you and everyone who just like send me tips. Um, So there's a tip jar below on this page you never ever ever have to feel um pressured to send me money um but i am paying my like thanks to you guys i'm paying my whole electric bill with tips that i've gotten uh sorry not my whole electric bill we'll get there my whole internet bill with tips that i've gotten from stream so i appreciate you um and then also venmo at samla st pierre yeah I don't know if that worked correctly, but um, but yeah, it helps a lot. I appreciate you, and then you get a recording of class, so you can play this anytime, any of the days that you sleep in or miss it. You can always just send me a five dollar Venmo or on PayPal or Cash App or whatever, and I'll send you the link right over. As always, you can always reach out to me for questions about the practice, you know about a pose about a movement that you're not quite sure about, about some pain that you're feeling. I'm not a doctor, but in terms of, you know, when it comes to your body, I can answer in terms of yoga and functional movement, not in terms of medicine. When it comes to emotional or like mental things, like if, if like the hardest part, the hardest part of class for you is 
that grounding meditation in the beginning or shavasana at the end, you can reach out to me too. Once again, not a doctor, psychologist, or anything like that. However, um, I can answer in terms of mindfulness and meditation. So, yeah, I always want to be here to help. Ciao. All right, bye, Mom. I love you. And, yeah. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm available. The only days I won't answer your texts are on Saturdays. The only way to reach me really on Saturdays is through through stream, through this chat box, because it's like the only screen time that I do on Saturdays is streaming Twitch with you guys. So, um, yeah, because I just do like a, t a tech Sabbath. I just don't do, I try to do low technology. I still use the lights. I'm not like, you know, completely like primal. Um, maybe one day, but, uh, this is not that day. Um, but yeah, I just do no phones. Um, I do answer phone calls. So if it's an emergency, call me, but if not, I try to stay away from my phone completely. Like I just leave it on my desk and, um, no Netflix, no Instagram, none of that, none of that. Thank you. Thank you. All you guys sending me tips right now. I love you so much. I'm not going to shout you out because then I feel like it'll call you out and I don't want you to feel any pressure but I am receiving it and I love you and I will um upload this video um as soon as